The camera's rolling. Okay. So whatever we say is going to be on there. Okay. <laughs> now I cut it out. Um, I was using this to do a podcast at the same time, but not right. today. So this is going to be on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, cool. When does it go on? But we'll make it look good. What? <laughs> no. It's done. It's on, it's on there already. No, this. this is <laughs> <a few. laughs> People ask me, oh yeah, when are you going to put it up? Well, when I get to edit it, I have to do an edit on it first. I have to put it in my computer in there, put it together, put the beginning and the ending, and then insert photos. Got you. And then I get it up, usually the same day. I'll send you pictures later. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. Well Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Welcome to Rick's Corner. The man, the myth, the legend. Now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a friend that came all the way here from New Jersey. His name is Vinny Galante. 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 I think I got it right. Yep. He's won several titles. He's got a story to tell that he was telling me in the kitchen that I find pretty interesting about the beginning of his training. And um, he's in good shape. He's 92 years old. <laughs> he's a year older than me. No, I'm kidding. But uh, I want to hear the story about your first workout and the guy that sent you the routines and all that with the photos. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I got involved in, uh, I think it was 1983. And um, after three months of working out, I, I decided to compete. Mm -hmm. And I was 16. I took dead last. But I knew that that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And mm -hmm. the day I walked into Billy's Gym in Bayonne, New Jersey, changed my life forever. Yeah. And... Um, you know, at the time in the '80s, you know, my mother and father didn't really understand it, but they were okay with it because I it was off the streets. And Jersey City was a little tough, got a lot of fights. Mm -hmm. Some kids that I grew up with, um, you know, are not around today. Yeah. And uh, so it, you know, my 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 life changed the day I walked into Billy's gym, and um, eventually, shortly after that, I met Gus Salerno. Uh, he recently just passed away, but he was my first influence in bodybuilding, where he took me to another level of training. And um, unfortunately, Gus had uh, a situation, and he ended up in uh, in jail for a little while. But um, my the, the gym that I worked in, his wife was an aerobics instructor, and I was working the front desk. And um, he said, she said, Gus will help you train for your upcoming contest. I said, How is he going to do that? She said, Well, they're going to take Polaroid pictures. I'm like, All right. Polaroid picture, and every Friday she'd come back to me with a new diet. Oh wow! Yeah, it was so, so it was it was like a little unorthodox, but it was the only thing I knew. Yeah, this is my first time ever uh, a coach, if you will, and yeah. he never told me what to do except it was on paper. Right. So follow a diet, follow a training, and every his philosophy was every two weeks we would change the workout up, and he believed in for my physique, my type of physique. Um, moderate weight, higher reps would work. And he was right, because throughout my career, if I ever had uh, spurts of lifting heavy, I couldn't get, out, get, couldn't get out of bed in the morning in the sense of, you know, being like, taking hard, it would be a hard time to like recuperate. Did you ever, time. when you first started, did you start heavy? He I knew right away that he I, heavy weights didn't work for me. Yeah. And I wasn't a guy who could handle heavy weight, but I was a guy that produced a physique from light and moderate weight. So it was like, I, what road do I go down? I, I looked more like a, a Frank Zane than an Arnold. You know, everybody back in the day, you know, you know back in the 80s, was, yeah. oh, wanted to look like Arnold, be big, big, yeah. big like Arnold. Yeah. And I was fortunate that my father really enjoyed nutrition. And he was the first one to actually always talk about uh, the importance of protein and we would talk about you know the importance of uh, juicing your fruits and vegetables and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I got like a, an early set of nutrition, really early, uh, 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 an experience of nutrition early on from my That's dad. That's the whole key. Yeah, yeah, and um, I benefited from it, you know, for early age, and um, 
it, it was it was a road that I think I cut a lot out. We were a lot of guys in the beginning, you know, have to figure a few things out. Yeah. And I had them in front of me already, not really realizing I had it in front of me, but it was working. Yeah. And I, I was fortunate. Uh, as a teenager, um, I placed uh, second in the Teen USA in 86, and I had a nice career. Um, you know, I met a lot of great people along the way who taught me business end of it, from Sean Ray to Monica Brandt. This is what year? Uh, through the 90s now. You see, back in the 60s when I started... Uh, before I went to Venice, the nutrition thing wasn't really known. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knew. You just drink a lot of milk and eat a lot of meat. Yeah. Well, yeah. a lot of guys today try to mimic what you guys did, but you, if, you, if you Google something, it's somebody's opinion of what you guys did. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. no one really knows. Yeah. Um, but that was when I lived up north, and then when I moved down to Venice, I got on the diet that actually that everybody else was doing with the eggs, meat and cheese and cottage cheese and, and all that, and no carbs. And okay. So that's what made the difference. Um, but you're right because there's so much out there that people say they'll I'll do something they'll correct me oh that's not true they're 20 years old how do you know it's not true you weren't there when I was there uh, yeah. there's no way you know yeah yeah it's your opinion which means nothing to me um, but there's a lot of that well I what I find interesting um, when I started I knew guys like you Arnold obviously uh, Harold Poole to Harold Poole had a great body yeah yeah to um, uh, you know Ken Waller to all those guys not, not just because they were in the, in the movies in Pump and Iron but, but I was a fan of bodybuilding yeah and the guys in, my, in the gym that I went to Billy's Gym they, they taught me you know about the, the history of bodybuilding right and if you talk to guys today I think they only can go far ba as back as the Sean Ray they don't, well if you ask some of the guys today the younger group who's Joe Gold they don't even know right Right, right. If there was no Joe Gold, there'd be no Gold's Gym. Right. If there wasn't a handful of guys right there with Joe Gold and Weeder's Magazine, bodybuilding wouldn't be where it is today. Yeah, I remember the first time I met Joe Weeder. It was uh, after I won the USA in mm -hmm. 1993. And at the time, my wife came in and she says, don't go off your diet. Weeder's office just called and on Thursday you're going to go do a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So we were talking like, do you think Joe Weeder would show up? She's like, no, he's a businessman. He's not going to be there. He's there for everything. He was there. Yeah. And it was the coolest thing. And I got to meet Lou Ferrigno that day because I think it was like that was the year or maybe the second time he did the, it was coming back, making a comeback mm -hmm. uh, for the Olympia. So I got to meet him and you know when, when Lou Ferrigno walked in, I remember him carrying a gym bag and I remember the gym bag looked like a tiny little purse. Yeah. It was so funny. Yeah, Joe was a good guy. I mean, he had he has a really distinctive voice, mm -hmm. and he's on every photo shoot. He just is hands on the art department with anything else that he does, and that's what became so successful. Well, he, he knew business. He knew, and when I try to tell people that, that when Gold's Gym was before Joe Weider got involved in it, it was a handful of guys with Joe Gold and Draper and a few guys, and then Arnold came, and then a few other guys came, and then Weider came down one Sunday, and we all went to lunch, and he sent some photographers in, Artie Zeller for one. And started putting all the pictures in his magazine. So when people around the world would read Muscle and Fitness and say, Oh my God, Gold's Gym, that's the Mecca body. Look at all the guys that train there, not realizing you've been in there, the first one? I was never in the first one, no. It's as big as a postage stamp. Really? Yeah, it's small. But it had the atmosphere, it had the ambiance, it had everything you wanted to do to be a champion. So people kept coming from around the world to see everybody and hang out in the gym. And it got so crowded, you could hardly move in there. But that's why it got where it was. But, um, Weeder's principles were okay. I mean, he, he learned a lot of his stuff from Draper and Arnold. Joe Weeder did. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. I mean, he was never a bodybuilding champion. Right, right, right. You know, some of those pictures you see of him, I don't know what they did to him, but they're not, <laughs> not exactly him. No. But it did put it on the map, and it did make it what it was. So then you started entering contests, and what have you won? Um, I was very fortunate. I had a great career. I won four national titles. I won... Uh, you know, even before that, I won my weight class in the Mr. New Jersey, my weight class in the East Coast, which were big shows in, yeah. in our area. And um, I won the Junior USA, I won the Junior Nationals, I won the USA. And in the Nationals itself, uh, I was second to fifth nine times. You know, I could have went to college twice. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I thought, hey, I'm done I after that. And it was uh, in, in, uh, right after 9-11. Um, and you can imagine being in New Jersey and all the chaos and, sure. and the sadness and sure. everything. Um, I had like a few weeks to go for the Nationals, and I should have backed out of it. But that, that time frame for me was I placed thir third two years in a row in 
uh, 99 and 2000. So I thought, this is my time. I'm not going to leave now. I, I got to go. No, you're right there. You're right there. So, but the stress got to me. All the friends we lost and all the things that was going on, and um, I I just couldn't get my head into it. And I took I think 13th that year at Plymouth, and I was inspired from 9/11 to open up my business, which I had which I closed actually a year and a half ago. Um, so I had it a long time, and I opened up a personal training studio. And I thought I'd never compete again. And then around 2005, bug bit me a little bit. And um, I did the Nationals again. I took fifth. And then 2006, I took off. 2007, came back in the Masters Nationals. And I wasn't feeling good when I was going into the show. And I was, four, I was 40 that year. So I thought, oh, it must be, you know, I'm 40 now. Maybe this is what happens. <laughs> But yeah, life changes. I took second in the contest, and actually, the day when I got home, I wasn't feeling well, and I developed Bell's palsy. Oh boy! The whole side of my face looked like I thought I had a stroke. Oh, I know three or four people have that right now. No, it's horrible. It's horrible. I had to manually close my eyes yeah. to go to sleep, and uh, blinking was almost impossible, and my eyes were watery all the time. So that lasted a little while, and then that subsided, and I got my health back. Couldn't tell you why that happened. I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, don't know. My dad had it. One of my nieces had it. So maybe it runs in the family. So then I really buckled down for the uh, 2008 Masters Nationals, thinking in my head that I would do this show, make an impression for the judges, and then get to the Nationals again. But I got to the show. I win the whole thing. I win the overall. And I remember, um, I think it was Jim Mannion or Steve Weinberger, and they said, what's your first pro show you're going to do? And I'm like, no, 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 I, I'm going to do the Nationals at, in October, in November. And they're like, no, you just turned pro. I'm like, no. And it wasn't, wasn't I just wasn't clicking in my head. Because for me, to turn pro was the Nationals. Mm -hmm. And so here I do the show as a warm-up, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I win it. I wasn't, I didn't think in my head I'd actually win the whole thing. I wasn't, I didn't think, you know, because you had to win the overall at the time. Yeah. There were no pro cards given out for yeah. second place yeah. in, a, in a class. So I won the overall, I get my pro card. And, uh, you know, then I, I did a few pro shows. It was okay. I was burnt out by the time I got to that uh, part of my career. I was just, I didn't have the energy. I just couldn't muster up the energy. And I just really needed to focus on business and my gym. And um, I didn't do as well as I wanted to. I mean, I think the best I did was uh, fifth in one of the pro shows. And um, then I stopped. I got into one year of powerlifting. I really enjoyed it. it kind of like got me back to the center mm -hmm. in a sense of like the enjoyment of lifting weights. Powerlifting's fun. It was it was awesome. You know, I met a lot of great guys. You know, I was with Universal Nutrition for 18 years. I used to write for them. You did? Yep. Oh, cool. I don't remember the lady's name, but she sent me all these supplements and they paid me, I don't know, so much a month. Oh, awesome. I didn't know that. A long time ago. Okay. I don't think she's even there anymore. All right. Claudia? Nope. Okay. So, I, uh, I just uh, I did my thing and... Um, tried powerlifting and then shortly after that uh, just out of my own stupidity uh, tried to lift heavy one day heavier for me and everything all the weights were going up nice and smooth it was like just it was a day where th things didn't hurt I know those days everything falls into place and then I went a little heavier because the weight I wanted to use was being used so I said well I gotta go heavier so I picked up the 90s I'm doing chest press with them and I know for some people hearing that, like 90 is not heavy, right? But, you know, here I am, I was like, I think I was 46 at the time. And I was never, like I say, I was never a real strong guy. So I knew my, I knew what I was and I knew what I wasn't. And I never tried to go against the grain. Did my ego get in the way sometimes over the years? Sure. I think it all does. I think it does for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. But I knew, I knew where I stood with my, with types of training work. It's really funny. Albert Beckles trains with me over here. And Albert's 87 now. Wow. And I've seen him, and he's got a back issue, he's on the cane and all that, but I've seen him within the past year put up the 80s or 85s for dumbbell presses. Awesome. I know. At awesome. his age. Wow. Yeah, he, yells so at, he gets mad at himself when he does, yeah, you got to lift these things, lift these things. I mean, he's, he's I would love to meet him. That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, I tore my shoulder that day and ended up having Ugh. nine screws in his shoulder. And it, I didn't work out for a year. And then I started, you know, putzing around a little bit, but the whole year, this shoulder was aching me. It's taking the compensation of that one. And then I tore this one. 
Yeah. So I have nine in this one and five screws in this one. That must have messed your workouts up. Mm -hmm. A little bit. And, you know, I was, I was depressed. I wasn't eating well. Uh, I got out of shape, you know. And then um, just put one foot in front of the other one day. Said, That's it. I'm going to eat a bowl of oatmeal today instead of eating... Uh, you know, uh, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Because that's the way, that's where I went with it. I think it's hard to eat wrong. I mean, I go out with people to eat, and I eat the, like the big uh, burger patty and the eggs and the cottage cheese, and sometimes tuna, sometimes chicken breast, whatever. Right. But I can't sit down and feel good about ordering a bag of fries. I'll eat one or two of somebody else's, but I won't order a whole bag. I just don't feel right doing it. And I don't want to get myself out of shape at my age, too, because sure, sure. it doesn't take long. You know, it was an experience for me because it helped me learn training people because yeah. I got to a point where I wasn't in shape and I lost my discipline. Yeah. And I had to relearn my discipline. And many times I found motivation, but if you don't have discipline, the motivation sizzle, fizzles out real fast. I've you know? said this quite a few times. You know where discipline starts? Where? Making your bed in the morning. Making your bed in the morning? Once you make your bed, everything falls into place. It just does, and I don't know why it is. I learned that in the Army. Oh. I make my bed, I make my breakfast, I get my stuff ready, I get dressed, I go to the gym. That's my discipline. And it's the same routine every morning. I don't deviate from it, unless I'm really sick. But, right, right, right. You know, even with this injury, I've gone every day on a cane and on a walker. It's yeah. well, you're here, you're here, you're here. I'm there, but it's hard. Right, right. It takes discipline. Absolutely, absolutely. And I had to relearn it. And I, I just, you know, at, now I, I just turned 52. And um, I'm back full time, full sw in full swing of training. Yeah. But I've had to uh, re redo everything. I can't train the way I used to. I have to train slower. I have to train more volume, and I have to take longer warm ups, and I have to take more rest time. Yeah, rest I want to talk about that because a yeah. lot of guys ask me. I get a lot of emails from all of you out there, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. You know, I want to train again. I don't know what to do, where to begin. I I've never been big on warming up. I don't know why. I just I, I put 135 mm -hmm. on the bar for bench. That's my warm up, and I go up from there at 225, and that's it. That's just my first set. Even today. Well, I don't do benches anymore. I do machines, but even today, yeah. Okay. I I just don't know what to do for a warm up. I can sit and stretch and do all this stuff, and all of a sudden, like half hour's gone by. Shit, I could have been out of here. Right, right. right. <laughs> well, you know, for me, it's um, I've had these injuries to the point where if I don't warm up, I can't. Yeah. No, I mean, you're right. You, I'm not right about that at all. I probably should. I think everybody should warm up a little bit. But the training, um, does it change? Yeah, I believe it does. I mean, not doing 400-pound bench presses anymore, and I'm doing the heavy dumbbells and all. I use machines. But the machines nowadays, as long as you have a muscle resistance, it works. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people told, uh, a lot of people would say, and still do, that you can't build a physique, um, a, a powerful strong looking physique big muscles with machines yes you can so now i'm forced to do it and uh, oddly enough i'm like a little bit better than i used to be i'm I, not the same i'm different i can explain that it's it's a look well here's the thing muscle is a muscle it works upon resistance all right so you're using heavy weights that's resisting it's building cells and getting bigger and bigger the muscle doesn't know if it's a weight or a machine it's just resisting Right. Right? Right, exactly. So if you go on a machine and you put a certain amount of weight and you do resistance and you go heavier and heavier, that muscle is going to respond and grow because it has no choice. You haven't given it a choice. It has to grow. So the machines nowadays are pretty well uh, designed so that, you know, like they come together now and are pressing where it used to be straight out. And um, they're just all different and they work. But you've got to be able to put the weight on and do it. You just don't go through the motions. Correct. I think what, what the machine takes out is the ancillary muscles. Yes, because you have the balance. You don't have the balance. You don't have the you know, Yeah, yeah, it, it does do that if you're laying down on the bench, you're doing dumbbells and you got to you know, jiggle yeah. them around a bit. But it's okay, you can work those somehow. Uh, I found ways of using machines that aren't the way it was designed to be used, but it works for me. I understand. They I have a the seated thing. tricep machine that the handles that you sit on, your, on the pad and you go forward. And you push them down? Yeah. Like a dip? Well, it goes push. out this way. So what I did is I lift my elbows up higher and I do them out this way. It's like doing a French press behind my neck with the machine. Okay. I just don't do it the way it says on the thing. I actually take that same one. So if, if you're doing it this way, I'll take the handles and push it down, turn it around, and do like a, a yep. almost like a dip. I keep, that machine's not made that way, but I do like, I like that idea. Uh, I had Doug Brignoli on, we were talking about muscles working, because all muscles pull, none of them push. People think that you, your muscles push, but they don't push, right? Are you following me on that? Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm Look, when you're doing a bench press, 
Are you pushing the weight up? It looks like you are, but you're basically your triceps contracting and pulling it up, pulling your arm up so that the weight goes out. I understand. Okay. Um, and your pecs are pulling in. So that's what's, what's doing on the bench press, it's pulling the muscle. If you do seated lat pulls, your lat's working. If you do standing presses, your triceps are pulling. Correct. Your delt. So it's, it's the push-pull thing, it's not like you think, although it's a good terminology if you want to use that. Um, what? You know, today today a lot of, there's a lot of um, talk about um, bro science yeah. and real science, right? So when you guys, you guys paved the way yeah. for, for my generation, you know, years ago, and we never had debates like this. There was no such, no, no such thing. No. You trained and you did a you did an exercise and if it didn't work for you, you didn't do it. Right. And if it worked, fantastic. All more power to you. Um, I get guys all the time like you'll submit message me on Instagram saying you're all bro science and I laugh. I'm like, what does that even mean? I never quite knew what that meant. Because let me tell you, I know a lot of competitors who follow real science and they don't get very far. Yeah. And then a lot of guys who just train and skip all the stuff and try to obviously do it smart. Like Dorian Gage was a smart tra trainee. Um, Lee Labrada was intelligent and they paved the way for, I think, another era of, of tra training. Yeah. But I don't think they sat there and like, you know, bashed anyone, you know, or- who No, the or scientific doing. way of doing something is, it, it, it's not, you can't do it by science and numbers. You gotta feel right. the weight, you gotta feel what it does. But I, like we said on one of my shows, if you take a bench press, a straight bar, and you're pressing out, how much pec are you actually getting? If you put your hand there and you're pushing out, you don't really feel the pec. But if you take a dumbbell and you go out and you come in, oh, your yeah. pec's pulling in. I never gravitated towards a barbell. It didn't work for me yeah. early on. Um, I never, I, I, even as a teenager, um, it was, I was not impressed yeah. with me trying to impress. I wasn't like motivated to impress anyone in a gym. So, you know, I had a lot of friends who could bench 315. And you know, I struggled with 185. It took a lot for me to get to 225. That doesn't mean their pecs are any bigger, though. Yeah. So you know, I was like, "Well, who cares? I don't care about the." You know, my father used to teach me, um, "Don't be impressed by how many initials somebody has after their last name. Be impressed by how they treat you." Yeah. And I, so I applied that to the gym. I wasn't impressed with how many numbers a person could put up. I just was impressed with what physique they could build. Have you ever done behind the neck presses? Yeah, but I stopped because. It, it just it wasn't a comfortable thing for me. I'll tell you why. Was, you know. I'll tell you why. People think they're going to get big shoulders from behind the neck presses, but if you're going to take the weight behind you and press, you're really just working the front delt. Yeah. You're not working the lateral or the back delt at all. It no. doesn't. It doesn't go into it. Those motions are done with laterals, movements out, movements right. back. Right. So it's a waste of time to do it. Plus, it throws your shoulders in such a bind, you can have a shoulder injury. Oh well, I, I didn't have my shoulder injury that way. But um, when I see guys doing that today, and they're 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 just like, oh, it's they, an injury waiting. They now. don't get it. No. And then they do the standing presses too, which I used to do a lot of, but it, it really destroyed my shoulders. I just still think the dumbbells are better and laterals are better just to work the delt. Um, the one thing that I that I find today that's uh, way different, and a lot of people say you're crazy, it makes no sense, but the weights are are covered with rubber, and yeah, it's you know an eighty pound dumbbell that's covered in rubber yeah. is not as heavy as a cast iron eighty pound dumbbell. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same, and it's like one of those things where you you know a, a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks. It's pound, but it feels different, and it feels a lot, you know, I don't a lot like different it. on the muscles. So I, I try to go to gyms that have more iron, a cast iron, right? Metal. That's old school. Yeah, but I like a, that. I, I know about the rubber thing. I don't like it at all. Um, the, my gym doesn't have them over at Goals North Hollywood. They have the old old dumbbells, which I like so much better. You know, you got to tighten them every once in a while. They get loose, but so what? Yeah, I don't care. It's okay. Yeah. But there's a lot of wasted movements that I see the, the younger generation doing today, and I don't know why they're doing it. These trainers have them sitting on the floor mm. doing dumbbell presses, sitting on the ground, you know, I have and an pressing answer overhead. For that. I have an answer. I think I have the answer for that. Yeah. So that when you started, when I started, there was no other outlet. Yeah. Maybe somebody went to karate or something, but yeah. that was it really. You you uh, you know had your had your share of uh, experiences in the ring with wrestling, and 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 I think as as men were. We're alpha, and we know we want to, you know, show what we can do, mm -hmm. and and we gra gravitate towards that stuff. Today, with MMA and mixed martial arts and octagon and CrossFit, you always saw that guy. There was always that guy that wrote everything down, and he never ever 
got anywhere. Didn't look any different. Maybe a rare on occasion you'd see a guy maybe growing, but the guy who calculates everything from workout to workout, those guys gravitated towards CrossFit. And today, you don't, you know, you'll see it's a different school. It's a different thinking. Yeah. You know? It is because I go in and I pick four exercises that I like for chest or whatever mm -hmm. body part. And I know four exercises, four sets, 16 sets, sometimes five, so it's 20 sets. And those, those sets I feel. I don't like to wait more than 10 or 15 seconds between sets. Well, because I can't do cardio with my leg, my knee like this right now, so I try to make it a cardio weight workout. I understand. And I use a medium weight, medium to heavy, not really light. I've tried the light for 20 reps, like you said. It does nothing for me. I, I feel like a little peanut in the bicep when it doesn't even get a pump. Okay. The minute I drop it down to seven reps and add weight, then I start to feel it. Some, some workouts I stick with eight reps. Yeah. And some workouts I stick with 12 to 15. Yeah. Depends on the day. 12 to 15 is okay, but when you get to 20, 25, like some people, that's way too much. Did, like the other day, like the last, like, and, and now where, where I come from in Jersey, there's this big thing with the no days off, never take a day off. And I'm like, this is ludicrous. You need a day off. And when I tell people, yeah, no, I'm not training today. I'm off. They're like, off. Like, what are you doing? Are you doing cardio? I'm like, no, no, off for me is off. I don't take, I don't train. So the last, I think Friday, Saturday and Sunday of last week, I had the worst workouts, had horrible workouts. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going out to California. I'm going to take Monday off, Tuesday off, and Wednesday off, and I'll train on Thursday. Well, when I woke up on Tuesday, I felt fantastic. So I went to the gym and had a, an amazing shoulder workout. It has to be instinctive. I took the day off because my leg was hurting. I thought, ah, I've, I've been every day. I'll take a day off. I don't mind. And then I'll go in tomorrow and I'll feel fine. But I realize more and more as I get older, a day off about every third or fourth day doesn't really bother me. It's, it's the best thing I can do. Yeah, I, I personally need a, a day off after three days. Yeah. Because I, I, I do try to train at a high intensity, and I try to, you know, I, I try to always train with younger guys yeah. so I could challenge myself. And uh, on Saturday of last week, uh, I trained legs with two of the guys that I helped train for shows. And it was one of the, I think it was the first time I actually said to them, I don't have anything today. I'm, I'm gassed already. And they were looking at me like, what's going on? If I, if I train with younger guys, those are guys in their 70s. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So what's your plans for the future? Um, so I competed uh, for the first time last year mm -hmm. in a very long time. And um, I tried doing the classic, the new division classic, uh, classic physique, classic bodybuilding, whatever you call it. And um, because I was down in size, I thought I would actually you know, get in shape for it. But I started to grow into the contest and I was struggling at about 192 pounds and I was keeping my size and I was trying to get to 185, which I did, but it made me look small and skinny. Uh, I ended up in fifth place, which I was fine with, but uh, that's not the road for me. I, I'm gonna just forget about the scale and uh, I'm gonna do um, w one of the master shows later in the year. Yeah, you can't go by the scale. I mean, I weigh myself once in a while to see if I'm holding water because I'm on a diuretic. Right, right. Um, that's the only reason I'm using the scale. I just how yeah. my clothes fit. Um, what's your feeling on working abs? I hardly ever train them. Okay. Um, when I'm in the car and I'm a hand on the steering wheel, I just squeeze my stomach side to side. Okay. And that's my warm up going to the gym, and I do it at the end. I feel like your abs are a muscle. Yep. and your abs can grow just like yep. anything else yep. and I've always been uh, known for having a small waist yeah. and you know I used to say to guys what you see in the magazines is just a selling selling tool for a small program all it is guys don't really train their abs I'm like no Arnold did crunches this guy did crunches and I'm like I don't really believe they did so well he did crunches we all did crunches with the rope you know with the, the cable right. like a hundred reps but that's it I can't train my abs like that they get too thick right 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 well, that's what I mean when I when I I mean do 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 I attack abs no no do I train them yes yeah different yeah different it's all diet. I exercise them it's all diet yeah all diet all diet and I've tried all the diets too I've tried them all yeah yeah I did keto which I did you guys call it keto no it's high protein low carb High protein, low carbs. You, you know, it's funny because today everybody, everything's a name today. Well, you keto, know? high protein, low carb was probably around in the 40s and 50s with Steve Reeves and guys like that. That's how they ate. And then science got a hold of it and you had the Beverly Hills diet, right. the, the Atkins diet, the keto diet. Uh, there's so many names for it. And they basically took the same diet as the bodybuilders and said, Science is, scientists have made this diet for your works. Well, they haven't. 
The bodybuilders created the diet. Give them credit. Absolutely. 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 They won't do that. No, they're not going to do that. They, they think they're all geniuses, and in the meantime, none of them are in shape. Yeah. But that's the diet that always works. Now, that someone said, how do you train on no carbs? I don't know. You just do. Well, you get your energy from the fat. Yeah. I had a... Uh, so, Dave Palumbo helped me mm -hmm. for the 2008 Masters Nationals, and I did his diet, his exact diet that he printed out online. And there was no deviation. And everybody was saying to me, it's a, it's a cookie cutter diet. I said, you guys look at this, you use, it's another term, cookie cutter diet. Why don't yeah. you give it a chance first? Yeah. So I did it. And it was in one, I was in one of the best shapes of my life. I followed he's smart. to AT. Yeah, he's smart. Yeah. And um, unfortunately right now, I can't do it. Um, I, when I was a baby, I had pyloric stenosis. And they, they opened me up, had to reconstruct my stomach. And they don't know, I'm actually going for an upper endoscopy in a few weeks. And uh, they're not sure if that is causing me to have some issues right now with acid reflux, and uh, I have a hard time like swallowing chicken and rice. So um, if I do anything, if I cut my carbs out and put fats in, um, I'm a mess. Even if I take Prilosec, I'm talking about this. I'm 52 now. I get no, no, I get. I understand. You know, you gotta you kind of be gotta be careful. Even on the antibiotics, I'm on. I'm yeah. my stomach turn upside down. But you know what I say, Rick. Um, I really truly believe, uh, Tom Platts was one of my, in a way, uh, a guy that when you talk about science and being smart about things, I always gravitated towards listening to what he had to say. Mm -hmm. And it's true about having the mindset, because you could do everything right and if you're unfocused, you're not going to produce a good product. But if you have everything correct, everything's together, you're, you're focused, you're driven, you're disciplined, and you're, you believe in what you're doing, truly believe in it you're going to get a great product. It's like lacing your shoes. You don't miss one eyelet. Right, right. Simple. I just came up with that. I like it. I like it. I like Where can it. people reach you on the internet if they want to write to you or talk to you? I'm on mostly Instagram at, uh, at Vinny, V-I-N-N-Y, underscore Galanti, G-A-L-A-N-T-I. Okay. Well, I'm certainly glad you came here. Uh, I appreciate being here, man. It's an honor to meet you. And uh, I actually was nervous coming here, <laughs> meeting you and talking to you. It's cool. I, I'm nervous, too. No. I'm good. No, it's a, it's. I have a long history, and when I go, people know me, and they. I just want to share what I know with other people and make them happy and put a smile on their face. Absolutely. You know, saying that, one of the things that has helped me was a long, long time ago. Um, I felt silly talking about bodybuilding to everybody, and then I sat and had lunch with Chris Cormier, mm -hmm. and he's rattling off all these names, and and I said, "Wow, well, you know a lot." And he says, "I'm a fan of bodybuilding," and he was proud of it. And I'm like, I'm going to be proud of what I am. I think everybody started as a fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. i got to close this out. But I, 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 my biggest thing growing up was Bill Pearl. Okay. When I saw Bill, I said, yeah, that's what I want to be. And then I saw Larry Scott. And I saw Larry Scott in person in Santa Monica when I was like 17 years old. And I saw his tries and his bicep walking around. I said, he's been training 10 years. I can't wait till I'm training 10 years. And I went to 20, 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> Uh, and I tore a tricep, I tore both quads, I've had some injuries, so, you know, things go the other way sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I just ran across the video, it's on my Facebook, of him doing the Scott curls. Uh -huh. And actually a video of him talking, he's much smaller, but he's showing how to use this and do the dumbbells, and he says, it's okay to cheat my curls. And Interesting. Yeah. He had good arms. Oh, he had uh, like a perfectly round yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good little video to watch if you get on my Facebook. Cool. But, you know, you all, everybody has is a fan. I was a fan of his, and I was a fan of Reg Park. Mm-hmm. They're all pool, some of these older guys that just, they have the big traps and the big delts and shoulders, and they look great. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's inspiring. And one of, the, one of the sad things about today is you go to one of the, you know, I, I'm not gonna mention his name, but I went up to a guy today at Gold's, I was training this morning, and um, we knew each other's face. So In I, Venice? Yeah, Okay. and I walked over to him and I said, you look great, and um, he never asked one thing about me. Why are you out here? Like, he knows I'm not from New California. And I think that that camaraderie is lost. It is lost. It's lost. Yes, yeah, and a lot of the young guys, they, they give me respect at the gym, but they're in another world with their headsets. We've talked about this a million yeah. times, and they don't communicate. And um, Different world today. Yep. And so is wrestling. I mean, it's a different world today. Yeah. Good when I had that ring out there and I was training people, it was old school style, like with Blassie and Moto and all those guys. That's what I liked right about wrestling. It was That's awesome. telling a story with the old guys that you didn't know if it was real or not. and And... You almost maybe came to believe yourself in the ring when they'd stiff you so hard. <laughs> so, uh, but it's changed. It's like a whole commercial thing now, like a circus. 
Yeah. But yeah. everything changes. Yep. Yep. We just got to be the best we can be. Absolutely. I'm going to be the best 52 year old I could be. And I hope I, you know, if uh, some guys over 40 and 50 follow me to get inspired from what I'm doing. Yeah, it's good to, it's good to inspire them and work with them. Yeah. Thank well, you, Vinny. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're going to take time. this and we're going to go into the other room and put it in my editing. Awesome. Ah, thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code Grayson12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Grayson personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrazen.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.